Welcome to AM Spotlight. My name is Charlie Cooper. I'm the host of AM Spotlight. With me today is Craig Escamilla. We'll be talking about COVID marketing and how we get through this, uh, this new world we're living in. So stay tuned. Coronavirus, COVID-19, social distance, quarantine, new terms that have become a part of our everyday vocabulary. One year ago, we would have been hard pressed to define social distancing. We would have scoffed at the idea of people hoarding toilet paper, not shaking hands, and not trusting as much, along with the constant sanitizing. Yet, here we are. In the blink of an eye, everything changed, and so did the world of marketing and advertising. Suddenly, it was no longer business as usual, and we were all shifting gears as quickly as possible to learn the new normal, if there is such a thing. Or maybe we should refer to this current state as simply a new reality. Make no mistake, we will not return to what was. We will settle into something new. What that will be is yet to be defined. As marketers, it is our business to keep our ear to the ground and be on the forefront of what consumers want and how they feel about interacting with your company. Listen to what they are telling us. I'd like the AM Spotlight audience to welcome my guest, Craig Escamilla, we met Craig, uh, you came in and did a website with us and uh, we seemed to hit it off and, and your skill sets lined up with ours and uh, we just loved uh, you as a customer, but we found out a lot more about you as a consultant. Uh, Craig is a adjunct professor at Lamar University. He also owns his own company. He's a consultant at CAE Solutions where he specializes in strategic planning. And so today we're gonna be talking about marketing in a COVID environment. And I hope that this will find, this will be very interesting to our audience and we will be able to give you some advice and some tips to uh, navigate through these uncharted waters. So with that, Craig, I'm just gonna kind of get into this and ask you a few questions and we'll go back and forth and share some, hopefully some wisdom and advice for our audience. Sounds great, glad to be here. Okay, so the first question I got that I was thinking about is, uh, how does a business recover from the impact of COVID? I mean, COVID has just hit everybody uh, and, and it's just changed our world. Sure. So how does, how does a business get back on its feet? How do we get back to this new normal, if that's even possible? Sure. So I think, uh, you know, it, it's gonna vary obviously with each business, but there's some key things that I think that everybody can kind of do. The first thing is always, anytime you survive any kind of crisis or trauma situation, go back to the mission. Who are you? What do you do? So mission, vision, goals. Those are the key drivers of business success, right? Mm -hmm. So let's go back to the mission. Let's go back to the vision. Let's go back to the goals. From there, uh, what's still relevant in those items, right. right? Most organizations, I hope, had some kind of strategic plan before March of 2020. Uh, probably not a lot of that is terribly relevant anymore. Because and that's kind of what you do in your in your business. Absolutely. You, you sit down with businesses and you consult with them about organizational structure. You That's deal correct. with all kinds of structural things, uh, changes and yes, sir. revisions to the business plan. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. what, is, what is the mission? What is the vision? How is, is that still relevant? All of those kinds of things. And then what's our action plan to get there? And so that's the next thing we need to look at. What's still relevant? of what is, you know, let's keep that, of what's not, let's develop the new stuff that's gonna take us forward from where we are. So what is the series or pattern of actions that is going to help us close the gap between where we are today and what we've outlined in kind of that mission and vision and goals discussion? Well, your business must be really prospering because, <laughs> you know, I know we've never been busier because in my view of looking at the business world right now, the only constant is change. Absolutely. I mean. That's yes. what we're seeing. I, I'm, I'm busy, yes. And, yeah. and there's a lot of clients who, you know, a, a lot of businesses have been very successful over the last year. Those mm -hmm. that were prepared to sort of adapt, those that, that um, you, you know, they just knew how to take, 
they knew their business well. They knew who they were, they knew what their vision was, and they were able to just adapt getting there to mm -hmm. new delivery methods, to uh, a new world. And, uh, and so I've been very fortunate to work with some people who their questions are, how do we keep moving forward from mm -hmm. here as opposed to how do we survive? But don't, so you, think, don't you think some of the, the really successful organizations out there are process oriented? Absolutely. They, they have processes in place no matter what happens. I mean, in my view of looking at COVID right now, I look at it kind of like as a, a 911 event. Absolutely. Or an anthrax event. Yes. And you know, those were terrible events and yes. COVID's a terrible event. But it's adapting to those changes and looking at the problems as opportunities. Absolutely. Is the way I, I see this thing. Sure. Think about many of the things that we've learned and really advanced at an accelerated pace. Remote work, the ability to right. look at how conferences and conventions have changed, they, right? They now, of course, you have the virtual versions of those and what that looks like, but think about the, the greater impact to organizations. Uh, an organization might have had a, 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 a professional development budget, say, of $10,000 mm -hmm. a year previously. Maybe two people got to go to one or two conferences a year when you factored in travel expenses, conference fees, all mm -hmm. that kind of stuff, right? Now that it's all digital, many of these conference fees are down to just a couple hundred bucks. Yeah. And that's often an organizational license to participate. So now 10, 15, 20 people can mm -hmm. benefit from these uh, these resources that are available yeah. in a completely different way. It's yeah, it's, it, it's interesting. You mentioned uh, the remote. Uh, in the past year, we picked up clients from Israel, mm -hmm. California, New York, sure. uh, outside of our area in Texas, sure. and uh, we do everything remotely. Absolutely. So and and just, it works. It works. It, it's, it's, it's an interesting uh, new way forward, but of course that has implications for managers and businesses and business strategy. Mm -hmm. First of all, it's great. You can attract new kinds of workers, right? Mm -hmm. People outside the normal realm. You can probably cut the expenses a little bit because those people are willing to work from wherever remotely, and you right. know, if you can give them a good clear set of expectations you can get really good results. Do you think it's harder or easier for leaders to lead today in this change environment? You know, uh, it seems like, it's kind of a loaded question, but it seems like it's a little harder if you don't have specific goals that people, because they're, they need direction because they're operating from home. They've never done that before, and and so they need more leadership. Right. Uh, I, I would think is that. So I think it's hard. I think the most fundamental thing that makes it harder is if managers are still willing to, or are still trying to manage in the old ways. Oh. So those okay. that are willing to adapt their management style are going to be successful, and I don't think they're going to find it as difficult. But I think that you're spot on. The organizations, the managers that are going to do well, especially managing a remote workforce are those that do have a, a very clear mission, a very clear vision. I hate to keep reiterating the no. same thing. Clear goals, clear strategies, clear job descriptions, clear expectations of those things. And if you hire the right people and if you can communicate those elements on the front end and hire for that fit with the organization, there's a good chance that those people don't really need to be micromanaged. They're but don't you, don't you think it's important to maintain core values of the yes. company? To know who you are yep. as an organization. Yes. And, uh, and I think those need to be a, an essential part of the recruitment and selection process when you're hiring somebody on the front end. Yeah. Identifying candidates for a job that match your values, your mission, your vision, your goals. Identifying uh, those people in the interview process and then bringing them on board. Those people are going to need a lot less management because they get it. You know, I, I used to work for a large manufacturing co uh, company, a nationwide company, before I owned my own company. And they always used to talk about uh, SMART goals, mm -hmm. you know, and you've heard that before. Specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, time sensitive. Right. Those kind of goals right. have to be uh, communicated clearly to the people to give uh, clear leadership, you know. That's correct. And uh, there's actually a passage of scripture in Hosea that says, make the vision plain so you can run to it. In other words, you know, write it down and, and, and let people follow it because people are looking for good leadership sure. today, don't you think? Absolutely, and I tell clients and students all the time and I have to remind myself as well, just the way the human brain works, Plenty of psychological studies behind I'm trying this. to figure out how mine works Yeah, well, now. me too, right? <laughs> but there's, there's plenty of research behind the fact that nothing really motivates action as well as a clear vision. Um, that's good. You know, when, when there's a clear vision that's articulated and clearly in place, the mind knows how to close the gap between here and there. That's mm -hmm. what it's designed to do. Wow. 
And you get into that in some of your consulting. You bet I do. Hello. Yeah, one of my favorite analogies is, or I, I, we've not talked about this, do you play golf? Oh, yeah. Okay, all right. So, you know, one of my best uh, analogies. Not real well, but I think I do. <laughs> yeah, see, in my mind, I, I think I'm better. That's right. I was always good at the short game, but, you know, I'm little, so <laughs> I didn't have a lot of power. Um, but, I, you know, a, a great analogy for this is when you're standing on the tee box, right? You have swing thoughts, right? Mm -hmm. And swing Muscle thoughts. Muscle memory. Yeah, exactly. And swing thoughts are things like, oh, this is that hole where I always go in the water or I always go in the sand or I always go out in the woods over here or whatever, right? When those thoughts are going through your head, guess what type of swing and resulting shot and ball placement are going to come out of that? Probably in the water. That's exactly bunker. right. As opposed to, okay, this is that hole where, now, what I'm going to do is X, Y, Z, and then really focusing on the, the successful outcome you want. Same thing's true in business. Same thing's true if you're a runner, if you're on a diet, it's all true. Yeah. If you're a parent, yeah. you know, it's, it's, it's always true. I was reading a sign that says, uh, progress is painful, so therefore keep a good attitude. Yeah, absolutely. You know? I mean, attitude in today's yeah. workforce is so essential. Well, and good I, think, I think one of the things that we've seen with businesses that have been successful, that have adapted successfully over the last 18 months or so, is uh, that they focused on what they can control. Uh, we can't control outcomes, none of us, as individuals or as businesses. We can't control outcomes, but we can control how we respond to those. And I think a lot of reactive decision making is what leads to not success. Uh, a That's lot so of responding is what leads That's to success. That's so interesting. I've been telling our company lately, uh, my creative services director, Lance, who you worked with on the website. Yes, of course. Uh, I keep on, I feel like a broken record, but I think it's important that we stay in our lane. We understand what our strengths are, also maybe what our weaknesses are, and stay in that lane so you can excel. Yes. You know, my grandpa gave me the best advice. Find a field that you can do great at and be determined to be the very best at that you can. Right. Then no matter if COVID comes or whatever comes your way, you're going to still have a job. Right. You're going to still be okay. Yes. But just determined to be the best at what you're doing, and, and yes. I think things will be fine. I, yeah, I had a recent conversation with a client, and, and that's exactly what we talked about. I said, you know, I, I, I have full faith and confidence in your ability to figure out the way forward. Come on. And the, 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 they, the, they do. They know what to mm -hmm. do, right? That's good. Um, and so, uh, but they need that encouragement. We all need that encouragement. Don't we? And we all needed a lot more of it, you know, a year ago. Fortunately, it seems that, that things generally are moving in, in a, an overall positive direction for our, you know, yeah. business world. We but all there's live, still a lot of uncertainty out there. There is. Yeah. And uh, we all live in the same room, the room for improvement. That's right. I mean, we're, we're, sure. we're a work in process sure. at all times. So. Well, I think one of the keys um, for, for companies that are trying to, to be successful in that work in pro process, especially when there's still uncertainty that remains, is communication. Gosh, that's so important. I mean, this is what you do all day, every day, yeah. right? Help people communicate, get their message out there in an yeah. effective way. Yeah. But it's true on the internal side, too. And so you talked about how I help clients a lot with structure and internal operations. Well, you're leading me into the next topic. Well, I wanted to talk sure. to you about that. Sure. Could continue on with that communication sure. uh, thought process. I, you know, I, I was wondering, in your, in your line of consulting, what are the biggest challenges in developing new strategies? Because yeah. people don't like change. No. Hey, have you found that? <laughs> I mean, they, they're creatures of habit. Well, people don't like change, but the interesting thing is that, of course, entrepreneurs who start businesses do, because if if, oh. if they didn't like change, then we wouldn't have any of that's the right. things. That's right. They're visionaries, and sometimes Correct. that's evolving and changing. Right, but it drives their people nuts, right? So to your point, yeah. <laughs> so to your point, in order to not drive the people nuts, right. uh, you know, communication. There has to be communication. So it's great to be clear on what your mission, vision, values, and all that stuff is, but if you're not sharing that with your team, uh, it's going to be very difficult for them to implement what they need to to make those things a reality. But don't you think good leadership involves instilling confidence in those who are following? Always. I mean, always. It has to. And I think when there's uncertainty, uh, it's important to communicate things like there is still uncertainty and I don't know what the way forward is or what mm -hmm. our solution to so this So being problem. honest with the people. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think, you know, vulnerability as a leader or, or you it's know, transparency. Uh, yeah, thing, and it, it? It, it got a little overrated and a little overextended maybe sure. 10 years ago or so as a management fad. Um, but, uh, you know, when the worst thing you can do as a manager when everybody knows that there's a lot of uncertainty is to walk in the room and say, I know what to do, I have the answer. No, you don't, right? I mean, none of us do. None of us knew what to do in March of 2020, yeah. right? I heard a doctor once say, if you ever hear a doctor say they got the answer to everything, 
Don't go to that doctor. Get a new doctor. Because, <laughs> you know, nobody has the answer to everything. That's exactly right. But, uh, yeah, so I think, you know, you have to be, uh, you have to be uh, brave enough to say, I, I don't know what the answer is, but I am confident that we'll figure it out. So, so how do you, what would you tell somebody would be some of the best things to advise your employees about this new remote communication? Because so many people today are, are working from home in the COVID environment. We're trying to navigate these waters. We were 10 weeks, yep. uh, you know, in and we were uh, working remotely and it worked okay. We, sure. we met weekly, we had creative projects, but everybody knew specific tasks. To me, there's nothing like collaborating in person. Like we're meeting in person, I love meeting in person. Agreed. Uh, most of the time now I meet via Zoom or, right. or some kind of video conference. Right. So what would you tell those company leaders out there uh, they can help their people uh, on the remote side? Because that's a big part of what we do. Yeah, so I think that one of the tendencies that we have when we're disconnected from people physically is that uh, we, we think we need to check in more frequently. And what we're actually doing when we check in more frequently is disrupting people's workflows. Yeah. So outlining, again, kind of coming back to, okay, like you said, some explicit tasks or some clear goals or outcomes that need to be achieved and uh, communicating that you are available for support as needed, but that you want to kind of stay out of the way. Uh, here are the benchmarks, here are the deadlines, here are the progress measures, whatever that may be. Defining some different things that gives people the guidance they need, but then get out of their way, right? Yeah, like in our from. business, we have a marketing company, and I like to give guidance, but most people don't like to be micromanaged. Correct, right. They, they like enough creativity uh, right. leeway to, to be innovative. Right. And so many of these remote, um, you know, communication systems that we really latched onto over the last 18 months are not just video chat things, right? They're, they also have text chat features, they have right. file sharing features, they have other communication things. And so you're creating more and more places that people need to go to check for things, more and more places where you can reach the person, more and more of an expectation that people be available at all times and all ways for immediate responses. So I think for the manager to communicate, these are my expectations, uh, you know, gets rid of some of that anxiety that the, the employees will have about, oh, I need to respond because the manager, no, in most cases, the manager probably would rather you complete whatever it is that you're working. But then they get back to just managing expectations. Of course, of course. And, and, and letting people know, hey, I'm going to try to get back to you in such and such time, yeah. but it, it may be here and, and they understand that. Yeah, I think we have a lot of managers and business people that are really sort of you know, one of the, the one of my favorite sort of little sayings about my consulting work is I try to help you work on rather than in your business. We have a lot of people that are spending a lot uh, too much time working in their business. Okay. That's and so good. I think managing expectations is a lot of stepping back and mm -hmm. saying, okay, as the manager, my role is to drive the business, mm -hmm. to support the team, and to let them do the execution work. That's good. Yeah. So one of the things, one of the topics as I was reading your bio and having talked to you several times, uh, one of the things that I felt like was the most interesting of all the topics was uh, conflict resolution. <laughs> because I think that we can even take some of these business things to, you know, people we know outside of the business world or wherever. Sure. Everybody's gonna, gonna have a conflict from some time. But resolving it properly, and uh, that's very interesting to me because I yeah. think that, you know, we all live in that zip code yeah. at some point. So talk to me a little bit about, uh, you know, you've talked to me about perception and misperception, sure. you know, getting ahead of the perceptions and those kind of things. Very interesting and it's very applicable to our AM Spotlight audience out there. So sure. tell us a little bit about how you deal with conflict resolution. Sure. So uh, when I start my class each semester, the one class I still teach is an organizational behavior class, which is kind of the intersection of human behavior and business decision making. Uh, the first thing we talk about after introductory stuff is perception because it is the basis of everything associated with human behavior, right? Is mm -hmm. perception. And so conflict, unfortunately, almost always originates with You do perception. this at Lamar University? Yes, of course. Okay, absolutely. good. So, you know, perception, uh, w when people have a disagreement or, a, or misperceive the same situation, uh, conflict forms, right? And, and what results from that is emotional reactions and all the things that we're used to experiencing. What I think a lot of times uh, people in general, managers in particular, uh, you know, don't quite understand is that 
there are a variety of different ways that people will respond to and deal with conflict. Some people go into win-lose mode. I have to win, right? Some people go into lose-win mode. I don't like conflict. I shut down. You get whatever you want. Some people go into that collaborative mode. Let's win-win. Some people go into compromise mode, right? Let's, let's, you give something up, I'll give something up kind of thing, right? So understanding what the other party, or more often as a manager, what the two parties that you're moderating, how they're approaching trying to uh, address that conflict right. is really, really important to helping get toward a successful resolution. If you're, if you're understanding kind of the perception piece of what's causing this, the emotional piece of what's you know, letting it manifest, and the response piece of how people are going to deal with it, you're way ahead in your ability to, to bring that to a successful resolution. But one of my favorite things that, that one that? of my former professors and mentors and friends used to always say is, uh, you know, the first thing you have to do is get everybody to agree on something. On something? Yep. Not on everything. Not on everything. And Just get fact, a win. And in fact... Is that right? You get fact, a win. Get a win. The first thing that you get That's them good. to agree on may or may not even be associated with the conflict at hand. You got to get them on the same page before you're ever going to get the resolution of the conflict. Don't you find that in dealing with conflict resolution that oftentimes people are so insecure that they don't want to listen to the other person's party because if by chance they had a little bit of truth, then that would mean that they're wrong. Absolutely. Yes. Does that make sense? Yes, absolutely. And, and I, I don't a, know that I have anything further to add. I agree no, 100%. But, but there's a pa <laughs> this passage of Scripture has helped me more than most. Uh, all of them are good. But James 1.19 says, Be slow to speak and quick to listen. I think God gave us two ears and one mouth. And if we use it in those ratio and, and we listen right. to the people and we don't, we're not hasty in our uh, anger, because once you said something, guess what? Yeah. It's out there. And sometimes that's hard to get yeah. back. Don't you find that to be? Absolutely. So Jim Collins, who wrote Good to Great and other books related to that, uh, is one of my favorite authors, and his, his work uh, is, is some of the best, I think. And uh, I used to show a video of a speech, that keynote speech that he gave in one of the other classes I used to teach. And, um, and he was giving tips to young leaders, and one of them was, uh, what is your questions to statements ratio, and can you double it? And he told mm. this story about kind how of a two to one yeah, ratio. Exactly. Maybe. And he told the story about how he had a professor uh, at Stanford who uh, pulled him aside one day and said, "Jim, it 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 seems to me that you spend a lot of time uh, trying to be interesting. Why don't you spend that time trying to be interested?" And oh, he said that on. changed his life. Come on, man. Say Isn't that, that again. great. Say that again. That's you, really powerful. So the the professor told Jim Collins, "Jim, you, it seems you spend a lot of time trying to be interesting." Why don't you try to spend that time tr being interested? That's so good. Yeah. I've also heard something that really stuck with me and kind of in that vein that people, uh, you know, try to impress in, instead of trying to express. Yes. You know, and, and a yeah. lot of it's due to fear of motivation. Of course. They're, they're trying to overcome some insecurity. Of course through uh, not letting that other person in because oh, yeah. they're so dang insecure. Yeah, and status and, and scarcity mentalities and organizational politics plays into all of that oh, kind of stuff, right? Yeah, yeah. Building the network and, and yes, I have to, you know, yeah. Fear of failure, yeah. all that. Of course. It's well, don't, don't you find also in dealing with conflict that there's usually two sides to every coin? There's always two sides to every coin. And I also think that one of the most important things to remember is that the truth is usually someplace in the middle. Come on. Always. You know, uh, I, I've got a lot of little quotes and sayings. I, I love to read. I love uh, to read books. And uh, I've heard it said also that people don't really know, want to know how much you know until they know how much you care. Yeah, that's exactly right. And, and, and oftentimes just a simple, hey, you know, I, I care about you, man. Yeah. This is stressful times. Yeah, COVID exactly is right. stressful. That's exactly right. You know, and there's a lot of hate out there. Yeah. And, and we need to disarm a lot of this yeah. stuff. Yeah, and and let people know that we're we care about it. Yeah, there's been a lot of divisiveness over things that shouldn't be divisive, and uh, I think one of the best things that managers and business leaders, business owners can do is communicate to their people, to their customers, mm -hmm. to the public in general where it's appropriate. Um, yes, exactly. We care. We're still here. We're still doing quality work. Um, you know, I appreciate. We appreciate our customers. We appreciate our team members. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we're doing the best we can, just like everybody else is. Good. Yeah. Let me ask you a question. Mm -hmm. What, uh, how have you seen the world change from a marketing perspective uh, and a communications perspective from your side? Yeah. Thanks for asking. I mean, it's, um, 
For me, people can't go in the stores like they used to, and uh, we're, we're really strong in e-commerce. We built an e-commerce platform, as you know, that got bought by a large bank years ago, right. and we, uh, we know a little bit about that space. So we're getting a lot of requests for e-commerce stores. We're getting a lot of uh, requests to fine-tune existing stores, like build a landing page, develop an email campaign, fine-tune your social media platform, uh, look at influencers, try to connect us with people who are in the marketplace in our niche. And uh, so we, we get a lot of uh, requests now for that. And uh, basically, uh, the website has become, it used to be something was informational, now it's become kind of a lifeblood. Yeah. To a lot of so I would say at a high level there's probably ten other things that people have asked us sure. to do but at a, at a very high level learning how to navigate through the e-commerce uh, waters and uh, and succeed. Mm -hmm. Are you seeing that um, that businesses that are trying to beef up the e-commerce space are you seeing that that's proactive because they see that there's benefit to do that in the future or is a lot of it reactive driven? I think a lot of it's survival. Okay. They're just trying to survive. Mm -hmm. So when the economy starts getting more consistent and pick up, then they can thrive. Mm -hmm. And so they have multiple angles or avenues in which to do so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Interesting. So this, is, this used to be something that was experimental. Now it's become essential. Yeah. How do you see that this, um, that this particular crisis or emergency situation, you mentioned some others in the past, how do you see this one sort of in the context or in relation to other things that you've experienced in your career from a communications, from a marketing standpoint? Well, we had a customer, uh, great question. So many of you out there in, in our uh, viewing audience at AM Spotlight recall Anthrax. And Anthrax, we had a large direct mail company that did millions of direct mail pieces. It was the lifeblood of their company. Mm -hmm. And uh, when anthrax hit, people stopped opening their mail. Mm -hmm. This was this white substance that some crazy person tried to hurt people with. Right. And people weren't opening their mail, so they had me go as a marketing consultant, figure out different ways to reach their audience. So we went to some other forms of, uh, uh, of, of advertising, which a lot of it was digital. Mm -hmm. And it helped form our company to kind of go more from a traditional company to a digital company. And uh, so that was an event, you know, that happened uh, right there. Way back uh, when I was in the manufacturing business, there used to be a thing called a fax machine. Mm -hmm. right. And that's how we sent orders. When FedEx yeah. came, right. I had an, uh, a, a manager of mine say, hey, if you sell so much, I'll give you a fax machine. Didn't even know what a fax machine was. I figured he brought it up, then I want it. So uh, we, we cut our time to market from days to hours mm -hmm. in the manufacturing process. So technology is always going to change. Yeah. You're always going to have something come up that, uh, you know, when 911 hit, mm -hmm. the mo one of the most unfortunate events in all of history. Absolutely. You know, we used to be able to meet grandma and, and uh, mom and our kids at the airport. We'd right. go to the gate. Now, not so much, right. you know. So I think in COVID, the, it, it, these are all kind of 911 and anthrax. Those are kind of COVID events. Right. And we need to learn how to adjust and have a structure. Right. But be flexible in that structure to, to listen to different ideas. Right. And uh, somebody said that the tallest building in Chicago had about a two to three degree sway because if it didn't, it, the foundation would crack. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So in today's world, I think you have to have a structure, but be flexible within right. that structure. Yeah, otherwise the foundation will crack. You know, Nothing Craig, we could talk for hours about <laughs> COVID marketing, marketing in general, conflict resolution. But our, uh, you know, I think we're about out of time today. Uh, we might just pick this up in another episode. We've well, got a bunch wonderful. of other questions. Sure. And I know some of our audience out there is waiting to hear because they've got questions. And, and I think that you've got a lot of the answers that uh, businesses uh, need to hear to help their businesses to prosper. So I might just have a lot of questions to ask them, but thank well, you for that. <laughs> but, uh, but, but thank you for coming by and being a part of AM Spotlight. Thank you. And uh, Craig, it's been a pleasure. Charlie, it was great. Thanks for including me. You're welcome. The intent of AM Spotlight is to offer you hope. And right now, people want companies to be sensitive to the situation around us. They want to begin to return to business as usual, but safely. They're weary of the constant messages shrouded in COVID-19 dreariness. They want hope, optimism, and confidence 
that you are mindful of their space and safety. Our customers want a rainbow after the storm. On the flip side, there are still many that live with the devastation of COVID-19 in their daily lives and are not ready to move on with regular life as usual. They're more cautious minded and are offended by messages that seem to minimize the impact of COVID-19. The challenge marketers are tasked with is to find that balance. We must walk that fine line between not minimizing the storm and bringing hope to those that need it. Brands must move beyond this time and find their new footing with strong messaging that will resonate with consumers in this new normal where we don't just survive, but instead we learn how to thrive. Over the years, our company and the marketing industry has been faced with many challenges, but we have learned to be open to innovation and doing business differently, realizing that the only constant is change. We must learn to let change catapult us into the next wave of opportunity instead of having the waves crash on our dreams and encourage people to turn their cares over to God. Philippians 4, 6, one of my favorites. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. We need that like never before. And it says the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Pray with me. Father, thank you for this uh, opportunity to come to you. We need you like never before, Father. Bless the businesses that are listening today and the people that have tuned in with your presence. Let them know that you'll never leave them or forsake us. And so, Lord, we just thank you that you're working all things together for good. We love you, Lord, and we're trusting you to get us through this COVID-19, and we're going to be better for it because we trust you with all of our hearts. Guard our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus as you promise in your word, and we'll give you the praise forever and ever. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you, and thank you for tuning in to AM Spotlight. We will get through this together.